recently, you know, with AI being introduced, like ChatGPT and Google has introduced its own AI. So what impact it might have on the search engine and how SEO will, you know, what's the future of SEO looking like with AI being in the picture? Okay, so I know people are pretty much uh, want me to chat GPT. Uh, it's very trending. Um, where actually even I myself tried it for a few days. Uh, see, when, yeah, I, I don't, it's okay, okay. It will not um, help you with SEO for sure. I'll tell you why. Um, when you are writing the content on your own, uh, you know what business you are writing for, what outcome you are expecting from that content, and you also know what keywords that you know has to be used. When you just blindly go ahead and give it to your chat GPT, your chat GPT is asking which company that is you are writing for and all, right? It is just blindly uh, spinning your content and giving it to you. So, for uh, maybe for a company without writers and if they, there is no option for uh, with writing skills, then I would say just go ahead, but not for a long term at all. Not not even for SEO. Just maybe uh, maybe for some users. Uh, so for social media posting, a generic post, uh, in that cases it will be. And if you want to write any emails or something. But it will not work out when you want to talk about a brand or if you want to write content based on the outcomes that you, you have defined as goals. So that will not definitely work out. <laughs> not only there are plenty spinning of spinning tools, quill boards, everything. But no, I would say no. <laughs> With Google's AI coming into picture, how will that affect the you know search engine's capacity? You know, and will there be any changes that you know, even SEO optimists have to, sorry, SEO people have to you know adapt to for the future? Okay, so if Google AI is coming up, I mean, I haven't uh, watched the features that uh, they are offering yet, but if if it improves upon um, maybe a comparative analysis of content because Google is where we are we are always striving to get our searches on right um, so if if there is an improvement in case of a comparative analysis of branding everything then maybe yes we could try so right uh, you may you mentioned about content creation and uh, how you're still you know coping up with the content creation but even uh, in the marketing industry generally we deal with a lot of creative aspects and everything how would you you know keep this uh, creative perspective fresh sort of not lose the touch of creative self at least the creative judgment you know to to know what is good and what is not good as a marketer how do you know like keep your perspective fresh in those terms okay so um there are two things even here um i would say as a digital marketing manager if you ask me to write uh, any content on digital marketing topics I'll, I'll just start write, uh, sitting and writing it. That's not a big deal for me. But if you come and ask me, hey, go and research on this topic and start writing and you have a deadline, that's when the actual pressure comes on your head. And it always starts with researching. Uh, even if you know the topic, even if you doesn't know the topic, um, you need to research on it from multiple perspectives, right? One from a competitor perspective, one from a business standpoint, the other from a writing standpoint as a writer so if you consider all these things uh yes uh, then you will be able to at least write the content but anyways even if you write and uh even if it's a first draft or second draft for you you will definitely have some mistakes uh the very first recommendation i would give you is once you finish writing content go back and proofread it by yourself before sending it to someone for, for proofreading so that's when you will know, hey, this might be reading wrong and uh, you should be able to uh, maybe rephrase it or something. So that's when you you will understand your mistakes first, even before someone will point that out. So that's a very uh, important uh, recommendation that I can give. And uh, in, in the second stage, you need to analyze what others have highlighted it for. Let's say if I send it to my manager and she says, hey, these are not... Uh, fine can you try adding some more things so those are the analysis you always need to note down so that you can improve upon it in the next time so the feedbacks are very important when it comes to content writing so that's what i feel what is the what is the importance of continuous uh, you know sort of learning in this field because 
there's always evolving there's there's industry is always evolving the trends are always changing so what's the importance of you know constantly keeping yourself updated like i told writing content for every company is a way different so if you change company tomorrow then you need to align to their business standards sometimes if you are working for a us firm uh then you need to uh you need to utilize their way of language right you you can't just write in india indian english it has to be us english so if you are working for uk it has to be british english and uh, the the business goals for them is different from the business goals that you work for uh, uh, that you worked in an earlier form so it's always different and um, with content you you have to keep in mind up to date always it is not something uh, yes i know it i can do that it it never be like that as a marketer yourself who has been in the industry like for so many years like what are you what do you think are the few essential skills that a marketer or anybody who is coming to the industry should possess and should have it uh, learned even before they enter the industry what do you think are those skills that one should learn very first writing which i'm still coping up yes <laughs> and the second uh, is of course managing the people under you uh, so this is something i mean it is not a marketing aspect but for any time that you are working with a team of people uh it is very difficult task for you to handle people when you are especially when you are sitting in a manager role uh because uh you you can't be rude to them saying hey this is your deadline you need to give it to me by this time so you can never be rude uh, and you have to be sweet and you have to get the job done so i mean uh, that's that is where the uh, even i i need to have uh, he prevent on i i would say <laughs> people management <laughs> people management is uh, most important and communication skills uh, i think i feel uh, they are like really important when you get efficient with content writing of course without communication skills you you will not even sit and write <laughs> you'll not st- you'll not start doing that i would say yes yes that's that uh, that's actually true but uh see then uh, there is link like, as i spoke uh, spoke about the trends you know like you know there is trends and there's constantly changing environment in business what are few you know you know emerging trends that have impressed you and you are like okay this is going to be the next big thing has there been something that you are you've been looking forward to in future yes so um, marketing is not only about seo right um, it is something that you need to generate marketing qualified leads from any source not only from seo or not only from social so i would say in the recent years uh, the marketing automation tools like the salesforce hubspot so they are actually doing a very good job in uh, maybe i would say saving uh, marketers time for sure uh, because with a company with 1000 contacts database it's very um, fine for you to start working on manually but with companies like 50000 to 1 lakh uh, contact databases it is very hard to go and check which contacts you need to send uh, the campaigns to everything right so uh, in those cases i would say uh, from a marketing automation standpoint the trends are really good uh, and i'm also hoping there are a lot of lot and lot of features are coming up in the same tools or maybe i would love to see if there are any other tools that that are coming in the same line and even with seo tools there is a lot of improvement with semrush and ahrefs can, can you take us through the these seo tools like the tools that are you know used generally uh, for such efficient see uh, i would say with seo go with the free tools by google itself the uh google analytics we have google tag manager we have google search console we have they are real best if you use it in a efficient way even with google analytics uh if you start properly using the goals that we have uh just start creating the goals and start tracking them i think uh, pay tools are not uh, pretty much important if you start using these uh, these effectively but if you still want to do use paid tools maybe that's for a competitor research because google are not offering any competitor research for free so in fact i suggest yes acm rush and ahrefs for competitive analysis um in that um every maybe i would say go go and check every week on your website health score what issues you have in where you had a fall in the last week or last month so those are the details i would say uh, go ahead and use them but as a early stage just start with the analytics and search console 